Thanks for tuning back in. This is Mike with Middleton Motorsports, bringing you another video of the E36 Turbo track build. So today we're gonna go over uh, standalone engine management and uh, my old one versus the new one, why I'm switching. Uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of, uh, since the last video, the engine is now at the machine shop to get the new pistons fitted and uh, they're gonna check the rods, polish the crank, the camshafts, and uh, get it torque plate honed. So as soon as I get all that back, there'll be an assembly video of that, of me uh, filing and fitting the rings and uh, assembling the whole motor and checking gaps and all that good stuff. But uh, today it's gonna be a video on the engine management part. Got the old AEM Series 1 here, new Link G4X, or the E36X for this car. And we have the stock ECU housing to fit it in. I'm uh, just gonna go over a couple other things real quick. Got the old harness and the new harness. I have to get a new harness because this one was wired for the AM standalone. I wired this up back in like 2012, so like nine years ago. But to fit this new one, they actually have plug and play units now. So I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and got a new harness. Well, used harness, but with the stock connector still on it. I had to cut the stock connector off that to fit the AM connector and wire that all in. But one other thing I want to show you too, how hot this car got at the last track event. You can see this cover just completely melted. Look how hot that exhaust got too. It's all blued. And the clamp there, you can see that's all blued. It's just got torched. So the reason it got so hot is it ran lean which is part of the reason why I'm switching standalone units also. Switch over here. I'm gonna be mounting this new G4X unit here. I'm gonna unbox it and fit it in the factory housing. Let's first start by opening this new link unit here. This just comes with a new board that's going to install inside this housing, which we're going to do right now. Get the USB cable. Manual. Looks like it was a few stickers here too. But let's put this all aside for now. First we're gonna start by opening this old housing. It's got all these tabs we gotta bend up here. So Small flathead screwdriver. All right, now we're inside the factory ECU here. Now we gotta remove this board to install the new one. So it looks like we gotta remove all six of these screws on the back here. So the last thing holding it in is this little clip here. So use our little flathead again. Go. 
Shoot up arts now remote. Set that aside. Got the new link ECU here. This has a built in map sensor, so we're gonna have to drill a hole in the housing to fit vacuum line out here. I did get the expansion harness, which is this here, so that plugs into this connector here. So we have to drill another hole in the housing so I can uh, hook up all my additional stuff that I would need on top of just basic engine management. And uh, that should be it for that. And then we gotta route this uh, connector for the USB connection to the laptop. So we have to drill another hole in the housing to get that out. So I'll have to figure out which spot I'm gonna drill that in. But for now I'm gonna get this mounted. Those are snugged up, you don't want to over tighten those. But, all right, that's all together. Now I'm gonna to have to modify this housing. Throw the USB connection out of it and the map sensor line. Start with the map sensor line since it's right here. I'm going to drill a hole somewhere around here so I can run it straight out. Just mark it for a general idea where I want it to be. I want to keep all metal shavings away from that. Let's see if this actually fits though. I'm going to have to drill the hole just a little bit bigger. It seems like this is actually going to be outside the housing, so I'm going to have to drill it big enough to fit the, the hose here. I'm just gonna make the hole big enough to slide this whole thing through. Alright, so that fits through there now. Just gonna find a grommet to fit this so it doesn't cut through the hose. Put some burrs in here. Should work for that fitting. So I'm gonna to drill another hole. Route this one out the back like this. Let's go straight through the back of the cover. I'm gonna have to drill it out to this size though. I'm gonna have to go a few steps up. Alright, fits 
nice now. We got our vacuum line for the boost for the map sensor, USB. See one more hole in this housing to install this expansion loom here. Plug in there. I'm just going to run it straight out the top here. Somewhere around in here. All right, this grommet's not big enough, so I'm gonna have to go get some more grommets at a later point. I'm gonna go ahead and get this drilled. As you can see, there's plenty of wire for that expansion room there. So I'm running this. And I'm probably just gonna run it straight up just to the right of that there. Got a little interference with the grommet back here, so I'm gonna trim that up just a hair so it slides all the way on. Other than that, everything looks like it fits pretty good. I just have to get another grommet for this section here. It should be good to go. Now it goes all the way, I just have to bend the tabs back to hold the cover back on there. Once we got our wire coming out the back, protect it from the aluminum cutting of the wire in there. Just gotta get one ground up for there, otherwise everything's all set. So the next step will be uh, doing some of the expansion wiring and uh, getting it tuned. But for now, that's about it for the day. All right, so that about concludes it for today. Um, we got the new link mounted in the old ECU housing. So as you can see here, get the map sensor wire coming through the side, get the expansion limb out the top. I do have to get a grommet for that so the wiring doesn't get cut on there. And then we got the rear plug here to connect to the USB, which connects to our laptop. So on a pretty simple install on this unit. Um, I have another video of wiring in some of this expansion loom here because some stuff's going to have to go to the dual clutch transmission, uh, no lift shifting, or shift cut for the DCT, whatever you want to call it. But um, I forgot to mention a couple main things why we're switching to this Link ECU over the AEM. Because this old unit here only has 512 kilobytes of data logging storage. This new Link ECU that we installed in this housing has 512 megabytes, which is a thousand times more storage than this AEM. So when I'm doing uh, track days, I can record full sessions at you know high frequencies so I can really see what's going on. Plus another thing this Link ECU has is fail safes. So if I started running lean like I did on the last event, this thing would have just gone into limp mode and I wouldn't have had my broken motor at this point. So hopefully this will help you know, save the motor in the event of like low oil pressure, low fuel pressure, um, running lean, anything like that. Another thing is uh, if I want to put a flex fuel sensor in, I do run straight E85 on this, but um, it does give me the option if I want to run a flex fuel sensor and then I can actually have, you know, run some 93 octane or some E85, whatever mixture I want and actually have it running properly. But right now it's just straight E85. But for now, that's it. Um, stay tuned for some more uh, videos coming up. But uh, please hit the like button if you like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. Thank you.